crate P of mass 1.25 kilograms is connected to another crate of mass 2 kilograms by a light string. The two crates are placed on a rough horizontal surface, a constant force of 7.5 newtons acting at an angle theta to the horizontal is applied. The crates accelerate at 0.1 to the right. Crate P experiences a friction of 1.8 and crate Q experiences a friction of 2.2. The first question says, state Newton's second law. Okay, before we state the definition or, the, or what it is, let's just quickly think about Newton's second law. Newton's second law is all about um, F equals to MA. But when you state Newton's second law, uh, get the A by itself. So that's gonna give you A equals to F over M. Now it's actually F net, F net. So Newton's second law tells us that if a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate. This accelerate, sorry, acceleration, here we go, will be directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So when this is at the bottom, we call that inversely proportional. And when it's at the top, we call it directly proportional. Now let's go get the proper definition. Okay, so let me just quickly erase this for you. So here we go. When a resultant or a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force. The acceleration is directly proportional to the resultant or the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So remember, when it's Newton's second law, use this equation and then remember to get A alone and that'll help you to remember the definition of Newton's second law. This question says, draw a labeled free body diagram for crate P, and it's for four marks, so there's gonna be four different things we need to take into account. So there's always gonna be gravity. Okay, you could also obviously call that W. There's a normal force. There will be friction, and there will be tension because of this rope. And so there we have one, two, three, four forces for four marks. Now, I just wanted to quickly show you on the memo um, because learners often ask me, can we use different things? So I said you could use FG or W, but you could have used FG, um, FW, F Earth on P. Goodness me, I've never seen that before. Some people even put the, the size. You know, if you multiply this by 9.8, it'll give you the size. Um, there's FT. F string for, for the tension. Um, okay, that's an Afrikaans one. FT. Um, oh, there's Afrikaans here, yeah, I see. Uh, FF, FK, FN, normal, F normal, or there's F normal. So you see there's a lot of different ones that you can use, okay? So there's not a one size fits all for these. And this is from the official memo. Calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. Now, you know how we always usually do these questions and I always tell you the same thing, right? Um, do a free body diagram for each object, then do simultaneous and then solve. But this one is not gonna be as difficult because they've given us all the information, they've given us the acceleration. Um, so have a look at this. If we use just on this object here, which is the object P, this is object P, you could say F net, F net equals MA, and then we choose right as positive, and then you would have this one minus this one, so your tension minus your friction, okay, and equals to MA. So the tension, we don't know. The friction force, oh, I erased that, didn't I? So they said that was seven, no, a constant friction force of magnitude Oh no, that's, sorry, that's something there. Uh, the friction was 1.8 newtons and 2.2 newtons. So 1.8 for that one. Its mass is 1.25 and its acceleration is 0.1. You see what I mean? There's only one unknown. Usually they don't give us the acceleration. Then you have two unknowns, tension and acceleration. But in this example, they gave us the acceleration, but then they haven't given us this angle. So... It would have been too difficult if they didn't give us this because then you would have unknown, unknown, and the acceleration would have been an unknown. So you would have had three unknowns. 
Okay, now if we go solve, we get 1.25 multiplied by 0 0.1 plus 1.8. Let's write that a bit better. And so if we go work this out, we get 1.93 newtons. And you won't say right or left because this tension acts right and left. On this object, it acts to the right, and on this object, it acts to the left. And that's why they said magnitude anyways. There's no direction for that. Then this question for only three marks says calculate the angle. So what I want us to do is I'm gonna do a free body diagram on this object. So it will have gravity. So I'm gonna just say FG. It'll have a normal force. It'll have friction. It'll also have tension because of the rope and then this part here I always like to break it up into the components but you don't have to so I know that this will have a x component and it will also have a y component actually I'll say here applied force in the x direction and applied force in the y direction so those are the different forces now I'm going to go use our good old f net equals to ma I'm going to choose right is positive. So we're only looking in this direction. We're not looking in vertically moving up or down. So we're only going to look at the those forces over there, these ones. So we're going to say F applied in the X direction minus the friction force minus the tension is equal to MA. So we're going to say F applied in the X direction, we don't know. The friction on this object is 2.2. Some of you are like, Kevin, should we also include this one's friction? Because surely that one's going to slow this one down. You are correct. It is going to slow it down. But we will see that in the rope tension. That's why there is tension in the rope. Okay? And so the tension in the rope that we worked out earlier. Ooh, what did we get, guys? Oh, 1.93. So we'll say here minus 1.93 equals to the mass of that object times the acceleration, which is 0 0.1. Now we can get F applied in the X direction by itself, plus 2.2 plus 1.93. And that'll give us F applied in the X direction as 4.33 newtons. Now, this is going to help us now because now we can construct a little triangle over here where we know that this is now 4.33 and we know that this is 7.5. So if I make the triangle a little bit bigger actually, then you've got 4.33, then you've got 7.5 and then you can just close it off and then we can work out the angle using trigonometry. So we've got the adjacent and we've got the hypotenuse. So we could say uh, that's cos. So we could say cos of theta is 4.33 over 7.5. Get theta by itself. Remember to check that your calculator is in the correct mode. A lot of AP, at, um, advanced program or the AP maths learners, uh, they often message me and they're like, um, Kevin, I get the wrong answer, but it's because your calculator is in radian mode. At the top of the screen, it has an R, but you, you don't want it to have an R, you want it to have a D for degrees, okay? So just always look out for that, guys. It always makes me so nervous that a learner could go into a test and get that part messed up, and all of the answers relating to trigonometry will be, or any any things where you have to calculate angles and using trigonometry, it's going to mess it all up. So this is a uh, 54.74 54 degrees. On the memo, they did say that you can have a range of answers. So if you got anywhere between there, then you are um, correct. What did we get? Oh yeah, 54.74. So yeah, 